This is about a generational investment to keep America competitive in the 2020s, 2030s, and beyond. After the president's speech to Congress last night, the Secretary of Transportation spoke with Fox 13 News this afternoon about how Biden's plan would impact Utah. Going in-depth today, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg would oversee more than $600 billion in investment in everything from roads and railways to electric vehicles. Max Roth joins us live in studio now with what was made of that conversation. Max. Yeah, you know what, Kelly and Bob, the quote that you just shared from him, he was talking about generational investment. That was his answer to my first question, which was, why a state doing as well as Utah economically needs a jobs bill? Here's a sense of our conversation. Pardon the background noise. Next time I speak to a cabinet member, I won't sit next to the police scanners in the newsroom. <laughs> Utah alone has more than 2,000 uh, miles of roads that are in poor condition. We've got to improve our roads and bridges. Uh, we've got to invest in our ports and airports. Uh, we've got to invest in broadband. There's still a lot of people in Utah living without good access to reliable, affordable broadband. We have in particular uh, one of the nation's worst problems with short-term particulate pollution. A lot of particulate pollution comes out of the tailpipes of combustion engines. And uh, while we have great performing electric vehicles increasingly made here in the U.S. We've got to do more to make them affordable, to make it not a, a luxury item, but something that more and more people can quickly adopt and get the fuel savings that come with it. When we do, uh, that zero emissions, that's not just good for climate. That's good for uh, public health. It's good for exposure to uh, particulates that can lead to things like asthma. We've got to do something about that. And having charging stations so that in big, spread out places, and Utah certainly comes to mind, there's just as much confidence in being able to get to where you need to go as for people who live in a dense coastal city. Homes are staying on the market for an average of four to five days. It makes us worried about our kids being able to afford a house in the future. Uh, in a lot of families, you don't get to uh, worry about uh, paying your transportation costs one month and your housing costs the next month. They hit you all at once. And for too many families, you add those things together, transportation and housing, and it's 40% uh, or more of some people's uh, family budget and income, which is not affordable. So that's why we've got to look at things like transit-oriented development, planning housing, and transit at the same time to make it easier for people to affordably get to where they need to go. Unlike most of the of the presidential candidates last year, you you made a point of, of coming to Utah. What did you see in this state that is you know widely viewed as very conservative and uh, very skeptical of of the kinds of proposals that we're talking about here? You know, when I came to Utah, I was made to feel so welcome and really enjoyed seeing uh, how much people cared about their community, how much people cared about each other. Uh, I just encountered. So such compassion and concern, even across different uh, ideological lines. And it's a, it's a political style and a, and a community style that I think we could use a lot more of. You know, you heard there, we, we talked about housing prices in Utah, and it was funny, just on a tangent, I, I, I guess we're better here than D.C. because the Transportation Secretary of the United States of America says he, his partner, and two dogs are living in a one-bedroom apartment in D.C. <laughs> Live in studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah.